Growing up in Montana, public land access is part of our heritage, something we take great pride in. But it has taken the work of many people over the years to ensure that land was set aside for public use. In many places, like here in Maine, much of the land is privately owned and access has to be fought for. One of the most tenacious soldiers in this battle is Brent West with the High Peaks Alliance. Yeah, I spent a lot of days out here in the rain. It's uh, always beautiful. Uh, this is a pretty cool little story that you put together, you know. Chunk of private ground that the people around Kingsfield have traditionally accessed, used to fish, swim, boat, and uh, then it went up for sale. And you and the High Peaks Alliance jumped in and secured this thing once again for the public. Yeah, we just heard a lot of community members saying, is there anything we can do? And our goal is to bring resources to communities and work with conservation organizations to benefit um, recreational usage. And so this one had a lot of multi-use properties, um, you know, the fishing being the most popular and then paddling, hiking and other uses. So it really seemed like something we needed to step up and do. It's not trophy brook trout, but it's ours and uh, it's worth fighting for. In 2020, the crew at Meat Eater was looking for a property to support with our land access initiative. The idea, provide more access to more people. Brent invited me out to see Shiloh Pond and educated me on Maine's version of public access. Brent is kind of like that brother I never had and sometimes didn't want. No, some, some not people good. respond well to Brent. Well, right. yeah, right. Like my head was off the stock. His passion to protect this area is contagious. For my second trip out, Brent has promised to show me what the area around Shiloh Pond has to offer. And we are going to spend the next couple days in the big north woods in search of grouse and woodcock. And figuring out what is happening to land access in May. Access to private land has historically been available through a mutual understanding. This is roughly how it started. Paper companies working the land would cut roads, log, and then move on to new areas, allowing the forest to regenerate. Local residents worked out agreements with the companies, allowing them to access the land, and liability laws protecting landowners followed suit. A precedent was set. But a new wave of private ownership has been flooding Maine, and these informal agreements are breaking. No trespassing signs are going up, and once accessible land is disappearing. Local hunting guide Steve Smith and his stable of hunting dogs is joining Brent and me to hunt for grouse and woodcock. We are going to be hunting private land, but due to Maine's de facto trespass law, if the land is not posted as private, it's fair game for hunting. You just kind of run in a typical cycle. Run one dog at a time up here in Maine. Um, you usually try to keep the dog on the ground hour max, depending on the weather and uh, condition of the dogs and what we're moving along. Good weather right now. Good weather right now. Good sunning conditions. We have some moisture in the air. Uh, two weeks ago, drier than a bone up here, so it was tough on the dog. 45 minutes, they were burnt out. All right, Miss Izzy. I mean, obviously, there's going to be three of us walking, so. Correct, correct. Dog goes on point. Typically, what you guys do, try to find a quick opening, go to each side, flank each uh, exit point. I try to go in, flush and burn it up, and uh, have a good time. Okay, great. Sounds good. So, so the dog's got a bell on, real thick in here, so you can hear the dog where, where it's running. But then every time she pauses, you're like, oh, she's on point. She'll be stock still. That bell won't move. And then obviously, if you look through this stuff, when that bird flushes, you want to be set up in a spot where you think the bird's going to come through. Be real quick to get a shot. That's what we're waiting on. 
Here it comes, coming at you. Two of them. Good girl. No joy? No, but I didn't give it both barrels. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be tough. There you go. Drilled that tree. <laughs> This northern hardwood forest, made up of birch, maples, popples, and red clover, provide an abundance of feed for hardwood-loving birds. Strip cuts from logging operations generally give the best visibility, but the slash on the ground makes for hard walking. As a western hunter, it still feels pretty claustrophobic in here, and our shell-to-bird ratio is trending in the wrong direction. I feel like my reaction time has increased dramatically. But it's more out of spite. It just seems like with all the leaf cover, you're not gonna have much opportunity going through the woods like that. We're just busting them. The ones we're bumping in here are either too far or you're stumbling, I'm stumbling. Oh, that, well, I mean, I don't stumble. I'm pretty light on my feet, Brent. Well, I mean, you gotta keep, you know, don't put your stuff on me, is what I'm saying, you know. Knock one down, hot shot. No, that, that, <laughs> that last one got up, I mean, right next to me, within range for sure, and there was just, all I could do was hear it. Well, yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I think we can be a lot quieter on the road, and that's, yeah. you know, we have miles and miles and miles of this type of habitat, so. I think that's, you just cover more ground too. Yeah, sounds good, man. Sounds good, I'm down. If hunting from the road is what it takes to make Brent eat his words, I'm in. He's on point, straight you. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, I see it. Bird, bird, coming out. Yeah! With Brent flanking and Steve's help pushing the bird out to the road, I'm finally able to connect with a grouse. Good girl. Here, is he? Here, is he? Here, here, here. Oh, good girl. That's a good girl. Here, let me see. Yeah, you have a hard time breathing. I saw you hit it in the air, and I was just like, yeah! <laughs> I was like, all right, man. A wing shot's always better anyways, it makes you feel better. Oh, that was great. Dang, good dog, good girl. She's like, I've been seeing birds. I don't know what your guys' problem is. As excited as I am to bag a grouse, Brent is even more excited. He genuinely loves hunting these old logging roads and regrowth forests. But access here is a fickle beast. It's funny, like how similar the scene is, uh, but how different it is. It's just, like I said, back home, just be national forest land. Yeah, no, I get that feeling too. Like I lived in Maryland, Virginia area, and there's big national forest areas, and there's dirt roads you can just go cruise on and go do your thing. Yeah, like the worst thing that can happen uh, when you're talking national forest is they gate the road, or they blow the road up or bring a cat in, you know, so you can't drive the road. They do that up here too. So then you have to get your bicycle out or just hike, uh, but you can still access all of it. Well, this is kind of up here is more like a perennial shift in where you go mm -hmm. because the roads get fixed up based on the harvest. And then some of these roads will just be allowed to grow back in. So yeah. you'll get to use them five years or something before they're too washed out or grown in to really navigate anymore. Yeah. Then you're done hunting there. <laughs> you don't hunt there right. anymore, you go somewhere else. But compared to like, oh, kind of a worst case scenario in the West where it just gets harder to go um, to like some of your same spots because they decommissioned a road, out here they could just sell the whole thing. There's a swimming hole that I brought my whole entire wedding party to. My wife and I went out the week before to check it out, see how it'd be. It's a favorite swimming hole. We went out with the whole wedding party, people in the back of tailgates, the whole bit. They had put in a gate in between those two weekends. And so like, everyone was like, what, and welcome to Maine, you know, like we're putting gates up. <laughs> 
So that was, that's a bummer because now you have to hike into that swimming hole. And then there's also, it never helps because any of those really nice spots that are not managed, um, you end up getting, you know, nuisance use, drinking, you know, garbage. Yeah. So it's kind of a dual sword. It's not, it's just a complex issue. No one, there's no one, one person to point at them. Exactly. With one bird in the bag, we're going to see if we can get a woodcock off of the same logging road. Woodcock coming out, woodcock coming out. Yeah! <laughs> I got a good eye on it, straight in here. It dropped. Good dog. Here, here. A beautiful bird. Yeah, very cool. Really first, good. first time I've ever seen one. Oh wow. Their ears are in between their nostrils and their eyes, which is bizarre. Did not know that. Yeah, their ears are like right here. And of course the quote unquote upside down brain. Well, I think that's because of that olfaction has, it pushes everything back and under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they're smelling worms. I, I didn't know about the jointed bill. They eat about 60% of their diet is earthworms and the other 40% is invertebrates and some plant material. That's awesome, really cool. The idea that this access could be temporary, like it could go away tomorrow or before next season, makes me feel lucky to hunt here. Maybe it's the not knowing that makes it special. We realize there's all different kinds of uses up here. You know, I'm a, I'm a hunter, I fish. I also mountain bike ride, I also hike. You know, and all those things, it, we have a community approach, meaning, you know, all our neighbors have accessed this wood forever. And we've had enough room where we can all do our separate things without conflict. Right now, there's no local connection anymore. So, yeah. you know, when you see your land trashed, you know, there's not a group of people that's ready to spring up and come clean it up, you know, and that's some yeah. of the things that we need to it's build up. more impactful too, if you're not living in the community and you're maybe you're coming out to the the wood lot every so often and you see that trash and and you know there's not much you can do about that but i think having some public lands conserving some land is important part of the matrix because you know forever all these forest roads we're using are the forest companies that are paying for them and we're just out using them and i think it's our turn to kind of step up as a community and at least conserve some of the areas that's really important to us. Go pop. Protecting great places to fish, hunt, and camp is a huge challenge. Whether you live in the Appalachians or the Rocky Mountains, every day we lose more ground to development or through folks making ground previously open to hunters off limits. Uh which is why people like Brent and the High Peaks Alliance are so important in protecting areas like this for generations to come. While taking a couple of birds out on the road is certainly fun, I want to see if we can put our skills to the test in some of the regrowth hardwood strip cuts. Come on, you birds. Not good. Come on. Grouse out in front of us! Get up! Get up! Coming your way! <laughs> it didn't come out! Wait on it! It's on it! It's on it! It's a rough grouse! Fly in your way! I'm back on the ground! Come on, bird! Up! 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 Did come out? No. It must have looped back on you. Shit. Get him! Ha <laughs> ha! Get him? Oh yeah! Yes! It's called teamwork, Brent. Hell yeah, Cal! So, uh, west side to the east side. I'm glad I brought my good trusty western Montana bird dog. Our strategy worked. You want to be ready the whole time and your hands on that safety and it just really drives home how important communication is 
knowing where your, your hunting partner is when you're doing these types of hunts is just be very simple to get excited and make a mistake. I couldn't have had a better flush ever. Yeah, man, that, these strips are perfect. It's kind of one of the practices they started doing after they stopped clear cutting is that they have to do these offset strips and that I think works out pretty well for bird hunting because you can just run them like hedgerows. Yeah, did you only shoot one time on that? All I needed. <laughs> All right, good deal. <laughs> well, you put it right in front of me, nice wide open shot. I felt like, uh, you know. It was hard lining that up. It was perfect. Not that hard. I'm just trying to make it you was feel perfect. better. It was perfect. I was a little nervous because I was going over all that slash piles and I was like getting ready to stumble, but I got in a spot and waited. Oh yeah, plenty of heft. That's awesome, man. They are gorgeous birds. Oh, they're great. Good girl. With our approach dialed in, we take our newfound talent to another strip cut. Good dog. Man, all those woodcock are like, I'm on pit cow side today. Thanks, sir. Well done. Good dog. Hats off on that shot. You waited until the bird got a little bit further out. We are starting to fill up our bags with woodcock and grouse, and damn, is it a good time. Gracie, get in here. There's just something about working in unison that makes upland hunting extremely rewarding. That's how the slow kids get them. Wait for them to land again. So that is Gracie's first grouse. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, it was like the wind's perfect for your side of the hedgerow there. They, so all those birds, when they flush, they want to get that wind under their wings and they're just coming right out. I got directly parallel with you. Yep. So, had I been thinking a little bit, I would have stopped short because that bird came directly parallel from you. Yep. So, had I pulled up, it would have been pellets your direction. I find grouse I like to hang so tight too that a lot of times you have back over the shoulder shot. Yeah. And the first thing, did you notice, you and I got a little too far ahead on the road and those birds, we walked right by them. So it kind of shows you Circle the value of the dog, you us. know. Right. That's a pretty one. Got a grouse out of the grouse spot. That's good. That's good. No, it's just, you start thinking about, you know, what everyone uses the land for. And it's kind of cool that in Maine, you can just come up here and mind your own business and do your thing, whether it's hiking or hunting or fishing. And there's all these, all this opportunity to do it. And that's kind of what we're working to protect is what you've experienced right here. Oh yeah, and it's, and it's such an interesting thing, right? Like you gotta uh, have a real mind towards private business, right? Because it's private land, and and it's and how to communicate that uh, res you know continued respect for the land in a public sort of fashion. Yeah, you know, in the in the larger sense, it's just being a good neighbor. You know, like when you know the landowners, or you at least try to start a relationship, and that's what we're starting to attempt to do is have better relationships across the land and, and be a point of contact for people and landowners when there are conflicts so we can have a good resolution, not a gate, not a yeah. not a pissed off landowner or something like that. <laughs> Just <laughs> licking it. That's a good girl. We're back at Brent's cabin just as the rain starts to fall, but we're not gonna let a little water stop us from cooking over the fire. And I'm always surprised how little fat are under the skin of these. There are some, like in that area, there's some good, like leaf fat kind of, I guess, I don't know, do you call it schmaltz when it's on a game bird? <laughs> That's a good word. Yeah. Schmaltz. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is very interesting. Like the new species, like obviously the grouse pretty, kind of knew what to expect, right? Yeah. As far as like, Chances are it's going to be darn good. The woodcock, though, like, oh, that's a tasty bird. Yeah, so there's nothing wrong with it. It just looks a little different than what you would expect. Whereas a grouse pretty much just looks like a chicken, you know? Like, yeah, it challenges people. Yeah. I grew up on U.S. Forest Service ground, Bureau of Land Management ground. 
it seems more stable, like regulations can change, use can change in certain areas. The fact that this is a huge system of private ground with really the same kind of multiple use type of aspect to it. But like I said, you kind of feel like a little bit of a uh, short term renter. Like you just don't know what next month's going to bring. I, I think that's a new feeling for people to here, just because the ownership's changed so much. It is a high level of freedom, you know, as far as the user's concerned. Like we just went where we would like this week. Um, for sure. But as things get more popular, especially this year, we have, you know, a tremendous amount of people coming up here pressuring these. But still, these landowners are, you know, they they have timber crews here. There's safety issues. There's you know, trails that they're allowing to use. They're, they're spending some staff time on foresters. So it is a give and take. And what we had for a relationship before with people, you know, working the land, we're also employed by the landowner. That's kind of switched over to where, you know, you have land managers and they're managing the property. And, you know, so the landowner is a couple steps away from the local uh, hunters and fishermen, and, and I use the term locals, people who've been coming up here to use the land, whether you live out of state or not, right. is like the users. The, right, there's kind of some traditional users too. It's usually someone who's using the land that stands up for it. Oh, you gotta, if you can find appreciation for the land and a great land ethic, a stewardship ethic, because you like to eat grouse, that's fine by me. Yeah, but you know, it's also we're sharing this land. Yeah. You know, there's people come out here, just pick mushrooms. There's people come out here, hike up, see the view from the clear cut. You know, so I think respecting each other, that we're in it together is, you know, what, what I think a lot about. Oh, absolutely. One benefit the other. After spending a few days hunting with Brent, I've come to really admire his passion for protecting recreational access in Maine. Access isn't a one size fits all idea. Its application is as variable as the landscapes across this country. No matter our different perspectives on what makes land public, we require guys like Brent to help bridge the gap and hold open the door for the rest of us.